So for anyone who doesn't know me, uh, my name is Amy and oh, it's on automatic. I am very sorry. I'll just quickly do an introduction. Uh, so my name is Amy um, and I've been in commercial fieldwork archaeology since 2012. Um, and earlier this year, I took up a post with Arcus Consulting. Um, they're a renewables energy consultancy as a heritage consultant. Um, I started seeing red uh, back in 2019, so it's it's not that old um, because after you know six seven years in the field, I was absolutely fed up of all of us who menstruated just never having safe welfare, clean welfare, or even just able to menstruate at all. Um, so yes, yeah, so I sort of thought right, something has got to be done, and with the help of mentoring for women in an archaeology and heritage, uh, badge of respect and prospect. Um, we've been able to set it up. So, yes, right, slideshow. So, yes, so these are all the amazing companies who have been able to help me uh, set up Seeing Red. I'd like to give a big shout out here to the Enabled Archaeology Foundation. Uh, the late Teresa O'Mahony was actually one of the first people I contacted when I had this mad idea to set up Seeing Red. And she's actually the inspiration behind creating the accessible period packs for on-site welfare. So a huge, huge thank you for the work of Enabled Archaeology, as well as to Teresa. Uh, so everyone else, uh, we've got Mentoring for Welfare, um, our little mascot is behind me, uh, Badger Respect, Prospect Archaeology, who helps launch Seeing Red at the 2019 uh, TAG UCL. Uh, so if anyone remembers me from there, hello. Um, and as well as for Badger Jobs for enabling me to set up a free to download guide as part of a Badger Guide series on menstrual health and welfare. So what is Seeing Red? Seeing Red is a grassroots movement designed to create change within the archaeological industry by ensuring safe, clean, accessible menstrual hygiene for anyone who needs it on site. This is a campaign not just for cis women, because trans men, gender non-binary individuals can also menstruate. There are many reasons an individual may be unable to safely access supplies prior to being on site. Uh, I've written some of these down here, but essentially, periods happen. Yeah, we can't help them at all. And yeah, there's many reasons. Yeah, period poverty is a huge problem in the UK. Uh, periods as well are not very regular at all. Um, one of the biggest problems of being a fieldwork archaeologist is that staff are often caught out or have a heavier blood flow than normal. It's often due to extra exercise that was unanticipated or just quite frankly, having a bad day. You know, it happens to the best of us no matter how well prepared, prepared we are. Uh, a lot of staff also have invisible conditions such as endometriosis and polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS. These can have menstrual complications and cause staff to be unable to work to a normal standard. I actually have endometriosis, so if anyone wants to talk to me about it, I'm more than happy to sort of give some tips and advice on how I coped with it on site. Now, post-pregnancy menstruation and as well the menopause, they are complex and can also lead to an urgent need for sanitary supplies. Again, Seeing Red aims to cater to anyone who needs extra support, extra supplies, and also anyone experiencing complex symptoms related to menstruation, menopause, and invisible illnesses. So Seeing Red fully, support, fully supports everyone within the LGBTIA plus community, as well as the Black Lives Matter movement, because it's not just white women who menstruate. So I compiled a series of horror stories. Um, I have actually had to trim them down to only two slides because uh, when I put out a call, I've had an inundated 50, 50 plus examples um, of some genuine horror. Uh, so this is, th this is a fundamental reason why a menstruation campaign is needed within archaeology. Um, so the fact that port au but no hand washing facilities are standard, that's, that's still terrifying to read, even though I'm used to that. And I shouldn't be used to that. 
uh, the fact that I know many women who've had to go on the pill or take the um, uh, contraception injections just to stop them from having periods because it's such a traumatic traumatic experience on site. You know, no job should be forcing Lamexin to alter their bodies. Uh, during buildings recording job, uh, I had to change a tampon behind a tree. Looking back, it was unhygienic and degrading. The horrifying thing about that statement is the looking back. At the time, this is the norm. Yeah, the fact that, yeah, for six years, that was, that was normal. That's actually not one of my quotes, but uh, that was one that was sent in to me. You know, looking back is the horrifying aspect of that statement. Uh, another individual, I had to change a tampon in a derelict building that was in the process of being demolished because there was no accessible toilet on site. There was no door, oh, sorry, excuse me. There's no door and I had to do it as quick as possible before the builders came back in. They had to carry the used tampon around all day because there was no bin. Bins are a problem on site. So there's often nowhere to just, even, even just pop, you know, something in a dog bag and just pop it in a normal bin. You know, there's often nowhere for us to safely conceal or change our menstrual products. Um, if, even for those of us who are menstrual cup users, hello. Again, if anyone wants to talk to me about that, I'm more than, uh, more than happy to discuss. Um, but even changing those is an absolute nightmare on sites where there's no toilets, no running water, no doors, nowhere safe. Another quote, uh, being plenty of people who came on a period early and had to leave site due to lack of supplies, as well as many cases of tampons being in, thrown into hedges. Uh, this is quite an important statement here where those who couldn't use tampons suffered the most. Everyone's body is different. You know, some people can use tampons, some prefer moon cups, some prefer pads. You know, menstruation is so private and so individual. Yeah, you know, there's no blanket, just do this. So for the fact that yeah, there's so many individuals who cannot safely menstruate at all on sites is incredibly problematic. Uh, change tampon behind a farmyard wall in sleet, standing in sheep poo. I mean, this is just a nightmare <laughs> one, to be honest. Uh, still wearing gloves as it's too cold to remove them and then carry these tampon in a pocket for the rest of the day. I just couldn't discard it anywhere. Um, I'm just going to leave that one there and pretend I can hear the collective intake of oh my God breath. Uh, watching brief where all the staff were based out of cars and so the individual couldn't go to the loo for eight to nine hours. And here's the important part. It was okay for the men because they could just wander off. Women, LGBTQI individuals were Mexican do not have the luxury of just being able to go and hide behind a tree or hide behind a wall. It's, it is a huge, you know, for those of us who have to, you know, go without going to the loo for eight to nine hours. We've all been there, we've all done it, it's horrible, things need to change. Um, and then finally, uh, it's been quite a lot of problems with water in the women's toilets, it was on and off quite a bit, and the principal contractor did, wasn't bothered about getting things fixed quickly. Uh, if anyone was having the periods, they had to walk through hallways, opening doors to be able to wash hands in kitchen sinks. I mean, that it, yeah, when you've, when you've just changed or done anything in the toilet, the first thing you have to do that you're taught from the age of, you know, two years old is wash your hands after going to the toilet. The fact that we are unable to wash our hands after going to the toilet is, is an absolute nightmare. That's not okay. And even though now with COVID protocols, there's a lot better emphasis on hand washing and anti back and hand wipes, it's, it shouldn't have taken COVID to get hand washing, safe, hygienic facilities in toilets. They should already have been there. So when I launched Seeing Red um, at the December tag in 2019, um, it's already been uptaken by all these units. So a uh, big shout outs here to CFA, AOC, Historic England, MOLA, Oxford Archaeology, PCA Archaeology, uh, the University of Edinburgh Archaeological Society, World Armstrong Archaeology, Wessex Archaeology and York Archaeological Trust. You are all so cool. Thank you so much for this. Um, essentially, with Seeing Red, because it's it's me doing it, it's voluntary, um, I'll happily send out a free period pack, as seen here in the screen in the portal, that has sort of the basic supplies, but I do encourage units to create their own boxes. 
So we have some fantastic examples up here of, I can see large pads written on there, tampons as well in another one. Yeah, the fact that, yeah, this site here has got some really, oops, sorry, some really snazzy bins to pop them in. You know, it's, it is so easy to create a period first aid kit for sites. You know, it's, that there, there shouldn't be a problem with staff being able to create it. So again, like to shout it here to Wessex for putting this very publicly on their website and sent out to all staff. That is, that's fantastic to see. So, so thank you very much to all, all the individuals and units as well who have currently adopted Seeing Red and I hope to see more of it. So the financial cost, as, as every archaeological project manager and also every consultant likes to say, how much? Uh, so quick note here, I personally advocate for environmental friendly options such as cups and cloths. However, these period kits are for short term emergency use. Therefore, hygiene is the imperative here. So uh, the fact that we are still paying tax because tampons and pads are still luxury items. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to go too much in depth on that one because you know, it's, it's a normal biological function, you know, it's, it's like being taxed, you know, it, can you imagine what would happen if toilet roll became a luxury? I mean, pre-2020, before everyone ran out of toilet roll, you know, it's, you know, you didn't think anything twice about it. You know, I'd love to see an end to the fact that, you know, tampons and pads, uh, we have to pay more for a normal biological function. So, for the units, um, in the, uh, Theresa Mahoney designed uh, accessible packs. Um, I've popped a little thing up here about how much the standard boxes of tampons, pads, plastic bags, tissues and things are. Uh, so for a rough period shopping session, that's about £12. That'll do for a month, month and a half maybe, depending on the individuals. And then down here, this is how much the period packs as a whole cost. £5.53, give or take where you go shopping. I went super drug, um, but that's about the standard price, to be honest, for everything you need to go in a period kit. So I'll just quickly talk you through these. Um, I recommend um, a see-through, easy to clean case. Uh, as we saw before, uh, two slides up, Th these fantastic finds cases here will also do. They have to be wiped down, they have to be easily cleanable they have to be hygienic. Having them see through as well just helps to make sure are they stocked up and are they full. A uh, pack of tissues, um, again, there's often a really severe shortage sort of loo roll in toilets. Uh, loo roll in port loose often ends up in the floor. It ends up here you know, covered in mud. Um, so just a clean pack of tissues. Hand sanitizer um, and or pack of wet wipes. Um, again, I put those as standard in the packs just in case there's none in the toilets. Um, obviously now with COVID protocols, uh, there's a lot better access to hand sanitizer and wet wipes. Uh, waste bags, uh, whether or not this is just a small roll per person or one large bag to just have as a bin, you know, it's, it then saves the hassle of us having to pop, use tampons, use pads, use things in our pockets and carrying them around all day. Uh, that was normally quite good fun whenever I was cleaning up my pockets uh, to throw my trousers in the wash and finding, you know, my used tampons, which is great. Uh, regular tampons, super tampons like pads, everyone is different, everybody is different. You know, it's to put in a range of menstrual supplies is so, would be so great for an individual. They said, you know, essentially these packs are just there to get them through a day, maybe two days until they can get their own supplies back in. So yeah, so that's what I would recommend uh, to be put in each pack. And ideally I'd like to see one of those packs go out on every single site and or handed out for all watching briefs and building recordings. Even if there's just one individual on there, you know, it's, you don't know, you know, it's no one else's business what their genitalia is, you know, just because there's someone on site who presents mail doesn't mean that again, they're not going to end up with problems. So just to reiterate, these packs should be handed out as standard to anyone who may be going on a job. So next steps, uh, I popped in some links here, but um, I'll just go through them anyways. Uh, you can download the Seeing Red guide from Badget. So huge thank you there to David Conley for letting me do this. 
Uh, you can make up your own Sing Red Pack or order a free one. Hello. Uh, from me. Uh, I've popped in my email address here, Amy mentioned women in arc at gmail.com. Uh, I also have seeing red stickers and badges uh, for sale as well. Uh, so money from those goes straight to the Bloody Good Pair of Charity and Shelter for Homelessness. Uh, it'd be good to make sure that staff are aware there is a seeing red pack uh, available to pick up or that there's seeing red packs made up and able to go out for all sites. And then you can relax and bask in the knowledge your staff are able to menstruate safely. So in terms of mobilisation, um, ideally I'd like to try and get this out to universities, all field schools, whether it's commercial, academic, uh, community, you know, anyone, um, any field school where there may be someone who menstruates. Um, also, all non-archaeological fieldwork related careers are encouraged to adopt these principles too. So, you know, ecology, environment, landscape, um, paleoanthropology, you know, anyone who may be going out in the field, you know, seeing red is for field work, not just for archaeology. Uh, so I'd love to see us to make menstruation normal again. Uh, and then I've just popped in, oops, sorry. I've just popped in a note here as well on menstrual hygiene management. Uh, this is actually from the Humanitarian Aid Relief Trust. So the fact that, you know, it's, you've got big organizations such as these huge trusts turning around and saying we need better menstrual hygiene management across the world. You know, this isn't just a problem that's in archaeological field work. This is, this is, a, this is a worldwide issue. The so the Humanitarian Aid Relief Trust recommends that women and girls, obviously including LGBTI plus individuals there, uh, should have clean material to absorb or collect menstrual blood. This material can be changed in privacy and as often as necessary. And soap and water can be used for washing the body and stain clothes as required, as well as access to facilities for disposing of used menstrual management materials. Those four basic hygiene managements. Yeah, the fact that you know, even e even in the UK on archaeological commercial sites, you know, it's taken me six years to create this seeing red movement because they do not exist. You know, it's like it's got better with COVID, but it shouldn't have taken COVID to get accessible toilets for menstruation. So I've just popped up here some common questions and answers that I frequently have been asked uh, during my time. So if you, this has been, these have been questions asked across Twitter, in person at TAG, uh, across emails and seen on uh, social media pages as well. Um, so, you know, it's, if there's only one person for the job, is it local build recording? Do we still need a pair of kits? Yes, whether they're doing solo work, it is imperative or the colleague is able to reimburse the period product expenditure. Uh, allergies, absolutely. Um, so cotton is an allergent. However, it stands the individual to manage their allergies. You know, quite frankly, you know, all the employer has to do is hand out a period pack. If it gets used, great. If it doesn't get used, oh well. Uh, I'll quickly make a note here about toxic shock syndrome. So again, going back to the comment about not being able to go to the toilet for eight to nine hours, this could potentially prove fatal for people who menstruate. Toxic shock syndrome is very real. It is rare, but it's a fatal disease where your body goes into, into instant shock. And it is often caused by tampons. I don't know about moon cups. Um, I'll have to look more into that one. Uh, but it's, you know, anyone who uses tampons is very aware. Do not keep them in for longer than eight hours due to the increased risk of toxic, toxic shock syndrome. So that is why it is imperative to always have toilets for people who menstruate on site. Uh, again, what if your colleagues don't use tampons or pads? Well, it is up to the individual how they manage their period and their choice of supplies. All you're doing by providing a seeing red period kit is, facil is facilitating an ability. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing more to that. Uh, I'll just, just pop up, an, I've just popped up a note here. Um, the Health and Safety Executive, the HSE in 2007, uh, sanitary waste disposal should be provided in all facilities used by female workers. It is therefore law for bins to have to be in any toilets used by people who menstruate. Um, it's, it's quite sad to say that, you know, I've worked for many companies now where either they were not aware of the law, but that's, that's how it has to be. So I'd love to see more companies actually reading health and safety, take, adopt the SINGRA principles and going, right, okay, if at the very least, here's a sanitary bin. Uh, 
I forgot to put this in the presentation, but Brilliant Bins do pop up sanitary bins. Uh, so if you go onto the Brilliant Bins website, you can order pop up sanitary bins, which will fit in Portaloos, which is which is brilliant. Uh, some final quick common questions and answers like I say these are continuing on questions I've had across emails, social media uh, and in person. Uh, so who, who supplies the pair kit? Well, whoever is dealing with the welfare considerations and or the budget. So, you know, it's up to the project manager to make sure is there a first aid kit and also is there a seeing red kit? Uh, does this mean my colleagues have to be more open with me about their periods? No, it is their body, their choice, their privacy. Your role is to enable a safe, supportive, inclusive space. Because so have to take time off for a period which benefits you and them. Uh, I'll just pop in a personal note there as well. You know, it's there's been so many sites where I've used on my entire annual leave um, during during the course of a contract just because of my periods. You know, it's I shouldn't be having to use my annual leave for a normal biological function. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, so I don't want to be responsible for my colleagues' periods. Well, periods happen to men and gender non-binary. You are not responsible for your periods. You are enabling a supportive and inclusive environment. Uh, I've only just noticed now that's basically saying the same as one of the other questions, but that says how often I get asked about that, where people don't want to be responsible for it. Uh, and then finally, what if the staff are working far away from the site compound where the toilet is? Again, it's a common problem in archaeology. Um, while I'm seeing red, recommends keeping the period kit in the designated site vehicle for anyone to access or the nearest site hut. Um, be prepared to give anyone a lift off site to the nearest toilet if and when this is the case, whenever they need it. Uh, unfortunately, we, yeah, we've all been in that situation. There's this menstruate where yeah, there's no one available to take us back to the site compound. So we've just had to, had to deal with it or go home, um, which is really horrible it's, it's a horrible position to be in um and uh my husband's actually on site today but he quite likes bragging that he's one of the few po's who will happily throw people into cars and throw them all over the site compounds whenever they need it so uh so woohoo married a feminist um so yeah i mean i'm very open to any of the questions um so yeah so i'd like to just say a huge bloody thank you period pun uh, to Fame for inviting me to do this webinar, uh, Historic England of course for their continued support and also for funding this webinar series. A uh, big thank you to CIFA for again supporting Seeing Red um, and um, I'd like to finish off by saying a huge thank you to uh, Ailing Nash of Ashtree Heritage who designed the fantastic logo uh, as well as designed and set the badger guide. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm now open to questions.